What's up, Giants fans, hub watchers, YouTube subscribers, Twitter and Instagram followers? It's Kush back out again with another Giants update video. Um, I haven't put out a video on the Leonard Williams tag or the Kevin Zeitler release, but when I streamed, I did address both of them. So if you guys want to know more in depth on um, my thoughts on those, the, the streams are up on the channel as of now. I'm pretty sure they've already been processed and YouTube automatically put them up. Uh, but to give my quick thoughts on it for the Leonard Williams tag, um, speaking from a completely objective franchise standpoint, there's really no wrong way that the Giants could go when it comes to handling the Leonard Williams tag. If they keep him on the tag, let's say a long-term deal isn't worked out and he plays on that $19 million one-year deal, that's a good move for us in my opinion because you, you have him under $20 million and you have him for one more year, that's good. If they rescind the tag, and um, I think if they rescind the tag, I'm not sure if that allows them to hit free agency or the only way they could rescind the tag is if they have an extension. But if they rescind it, let's say, and they allow them to hit free agency, that's good for us because we get a third round comp pick in return anyway. So from the whole Leonard Williams experiment, that means we got out of it in 11 and a half sack season because we traded a third round pick to get him in the first place. We're going to get that back. If, say, we trade him, you know, it's a tag and trade scenario. Once again, it's a win because we still got an 11 and a half sack season out of him. And I'm going to assume we get more than a third round pick for a trade because in that case just you know just let him walk we'll probably get like a second maybe even a first from a really desperate team for Leonard Williams and then of course if we extend him it would be good in the sense that I'm pretty sure if the Giants come to terms with an extension it's gonna be a lower cap hit this year rather than you know because if they come to terms with an extension he's gonna get like 20 million dollars a year which is crazy which I don't want to happen because as good as he is he's not 20 million dollars a year good that's like the elite talent of the NFL but what it does mean is that they're probably gonna lower his cap pip on the first year to something around 15 million dollars instead of the 20 and that saves us five million dollars this year so in that sense it's good short term long term I don't know not so much you know we're gonna have to see where the cap is next year and years after that and then with Kevin Zeitler my opinion on that has always been very constant very very much the same thing for the past couple of months he's one of our best offensive linemen you let go of him you create a new hole on that offensive line but you do free up a good amount of money in cap space so that's what it is it's it's a give and take situation we lost one of our best offensive linemen and now the offensive line got worse in my opinion it is just a fact we're gonna have to see how they replace him but you freed up so much money to use on a possible replacement right and speaking of offensive line the whole point of this video those are just my quick thoughts on those once again if you want a deeper one go to the streams the kansas city chiefs you know what i'm saying 2019 super bowl champions kansas city chiefs they just released both of their starting tackles in um Eric Fisher and Mitchell Swartz and Eric Fisher, the former number one overall draft pick, two really good starting tackles at the NFL level were just released and they're hitting the open market and it's just kind of a head scratching move for anybody that's observing it because if there's one thing everybody knew when watching the Super Bowl against Tom Brady and the Buccaneers is that the Buccaneers won because this Kansas City offensive line, which was injured, was getting dominated. So now they're, they're releasing their starting guys that were injured during that game. And you're thinking to yourself, what are they doing for their quarterback? You know, are they, they're, they're going to kill this guy. He has no protection. However, what you got to keep in mind is that their quarterback is, listen, Patrick Mahomes is great. All right. But like the contract he has is way too big. This guy's getting paid half a billion dollars. That's way too much. So when you pay one player half a billion dollars, of course, you're going to have to cut players elsewhere is is just a, a matter of the situation you know there's, there's been many memes over the years saying oh tom brady always his team always wins the super bowls i wonder how he does it is because he takes a pay cut he could see the bigger picture he's looking at the money i could earn could go somewhere else on the team so I, I don't know why other QBs don't do this, but that's a discussion for another day. But this is why they're letting go of their protection for their quarterback. It's because they can't afford it because said quarterback is being paid a whole bunch of money along with a couple other players on the roster. But for the Giants sake, you now have two really, really good offensive tackles on the market. One of our unsure positions is right tackle. I personally am a Matt Parrott guy, as you guys notice. I believe Parrott, with some time, can develop into our starting right tackle. 
but I'm telling you right now, if we could somehow get one of these guys, Fisher or Schwartz, they immediately slide into that right tackle spot. And that solves the hole right there for us. And really all we have to focus on is the right guard, which call me crazy. I mean, <laughs> why not slide Matt Peart into the right guard position and then have the largest right guard in the entire NFL? Um, I'm, I'm just kidding about that a little bit, but it makes it much easier to to basically help this offensive line out because then you're back down to just having like one questionable spot on the line. And if four out of your five spots are good, you know, if most of your spots are good, then it just helps out that one part because the offensive line, it's it's a machine with a lot of cogs. If most of the cogs are going to be working good, that last one should be turning at least a little bit. So I would I would expect the Giants to be looking in some way, shape or form to target these guys. Of course, you can't actually go and target uh, um, somebody that will come in in the right guard, right guard spot immediately. You know, somebody like Matt Feeler from the Steelers. Uh, that's that's a guy that Diggy likes a lot. And then looking at just the offensive line free agents in general, there's a couple guys out there you could try and target. Maybe um, Winters from Buffalo. Maybe he's somebody you think about bringing in. Maybe you even look towards a center and try to ship them out, like Mike Pouncey, who is currently with the Chargers. There are options to be made, which is the point that I'm trying to make. But now you got probably the two best options, specifically at the tackle spot out there now, in Fisher and Schwartz. And I'm just going to say, guys, I don't care which one of them we get. If we get one of these guys right here, I am so much more confident in the performance of the line than I would be with any other of these free agents. These are proven talents in the NFL level. Are they older? 100% they're older. I'm pretty sure that was a factor in cutting them as well. And yes, I realize injuries are a factor considering the last season they had they can recover they definitely can recover fisher he 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 tore an achilles tendon he he could come back he could be fine i i have faith that the training staff and the coaching staff can coach him up and get him back to health and then for schwartz he was basically he had a back injury and he recently had surgery for it so you're hoping that he's going to recover well as well the only thing to keep an eye on here is i saw on twitter there, there's a rumor going around that basically schwartz may retire actually and in that case there's really just going to be one guy on the free agent uh, market and that would be fisher um keep your eye on, on uh, mitchell schwartz though because he might be out of the nfl just in general we'll see what happens i mean guys the, the offensive line market right now, it has a good amount of people and that's good because the more, you know, options you have, it means you could offer cheaper contracts to everybody. There's, there's, it's kind of like a supply and demand type situation almost, but the more offensive linemen, especially at this level, how good they are, starting quality there are on the market, the cheaper it is going to be to get one of these guys. And of course, Nate Solder, he's gone. I, I didn't even mention it throughout the entire video, but he's he's definitely gone when you got guys like these out on the market. So put your thoughts down below. Let me know what you all think. Quick short video, like, share, subscribe. I'm out. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. I'll catch y'all in the next one.